All right, so Father, thank you again, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Lord, that you always, always share with us. I thank you, Lord, that while we have difficult times and tough circumstances, that you've never left us. And that you know. And that you care. And tonight, as we walk through 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Lord, we pray that the things that you have put in the scriptures for us, Lord, that we would take them to heart, where they would take root and work out practically in our lives, Lord, that the holiness that you've given us positionally will become practical in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, gang. Now, having started in 2 Corinthians a short time ago, does anybody need a Bible, by the way? We'd love to give you one. Anybody need a Bible? 2 Corinthians, we began, we first looked at comfort in the ministry. Paul speaking about the comfort that he received. We looked at the comfort he had in the ministry. We looked at his compassion in the ministry. We looked at his credentials for the ministry. The covenant that he preached as his ministry. And now we move into courage in the ministry. You see, ministering isn't easy, is it? How many of you are called to be ministers? Every single one of you. Every one of you. The minister isn't just the guy who gets up on Saturday night or Sunday morning and teaches God's Word. You're all called to be the ministers. In fact, I'm the guy who's called to train you up to be a minister so you can go out and do the works of the ministry according to, to Ephesians chapter 4. So, this then... What we're about to read tonight is really for you, isn't it? It's not just for me, it's for you also. Being in the ministry isn't easy. A recent study determined that 97% of pastors have been betrayed or hurt by trusted friends. 97%. What are my chances of escaping that kind of experience? Pretty, pretty slim. Yep. 70% of pastors battle depression. 7,000 churches close each year. 1,500 pastors quit each month. 80% of pastors feel discouraged. 94% of pastors' families feel the pressure of the ministry. 78% of pastors have no close friends. Let me repeat that. 78% of pastors have no close friends. And 90% of pastors report working 55 to 75 hours per week. You wonder why they have no close friends? Because they're working all the time. No matter what area of life you're ministering in, though, whether it is in the church or out of the church, things aren't easy. And Paul certainly had his share of tough times. You know, in experiencing tough times, it's really easy to lose heart, isn't it? To become discouraged, to want to throw in the towel, to give up. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we'll find five keys regarding how not to lose heart. We begin here at verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy... We do not lose heart. Paul says, therefore, since we have this ministry, this ministry is the ministry that he had been speaking about in the previous chapter, the ministry of the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. Not the gospel of the law. Paul wasn't teaching the law. He wasn't putting people under the law. But he was sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in the gospel of Christ, Paul received God's mercy. You remember he was on the road to Damascus, intending to arrest Christians and bring them back to Jerusalem. But in his mercy, God knocked him off his high horse, blinded him, brought believers around him who encouraged him. Paul realized who it was that he had been persecuting, Jesus Christ. The Lord himself. 
And Paul, from that moment on, became a minister of the gospel. Not a gospel of law, not a gospel of ten rules on how to live your life. It was a gospel of mercy. And he says, as we have received mercy, he says, we do not lose heart. There's the first key to not getting discouraged is first of all, remember God's mercy. You see, mercy was something that the law didn't offer. The law condemned you. Mercy was a foreign matter, especially to Paul as a Pharisee. He was not merciful regarding people who followed the way. That is Christianity. He wasn't merciful towards them at all. In fact, he says, I cast my vote against them in the council. In the Sanhedrin, judging capital offenses, he cast his vote against them. Mercy was foreign to Paul. But then one day he received Christ's mercy. And the man who would send people to the electric chair ended up before the throne of grace instead. And because Paul knew God's mercy, Paul didn't lose heart. Do you understand that God has shed his mercy on you? In an effort to save your soul, Christ went to the cross where God poured out his judgment and extended to you his mercy. God is both just and he's merciful. But rather than judge you and give you what you deserve, he gave it to Christ. And what Christ earned in living a perfect life has now been credited to you. Would you say that's merciful? If you were a murderer on death row, ready to get a lethal injection. And I stood up and went to the judge and said, stop, I will go ahead and take that injection for this person. Would you consider that a merciful thing? See, Paul understood God's mercy. And God doesn't give his mercy for no reason, you see. Romans chapter eight says, he who did not spare his own son Will he not also freely give us all things? What is the best thing that you could give to a brother? Eternal life. Eternal life? Absolutely. What's God given to you? Eternal life? The best possible thing he could give, he gave to you. In light of the fact that he's given you his best, can he give you everything else that you need? Would he? 